How's it going, everyone? We've got a major First Descendant hotfix 1.0.2. There are a ton of updates and fixes that are coming with this hotfix or have come with this hotfix. It just dropped earlier today. I'm gonna try to go over it as quickly as possible. I will leave the full notes in the description box below if you want to check it out for yourself. But the game has had uh, some issues that they are currently working on and a lot of them uh, have been addressed in this uh, hotfix. So let's go over it. Content improvements. Added the start public operation function matchmaking to infiltration operations hard. Start public operation is available even if you change the selected reward. But if you select an additional option, only start private op operation will be available. Remove the sequential type immunity spheres and from named monsters. They have been changed to be either the default or extermination type. The directors then followed up with a comment the dev team acknowledges the community's concern about monotonous patterns of named monsters and strives to enhance them. In particular, we've noted that the pattern involving breaking spheres in a specific order isn't appropriate for public matching and have decided to remove it immediately. As new patterns are developed, we will soon update the patterns of existing named monsters one by one. As named monsters frequently appear in hard difficulty and in special operations, we will continue working towards diversifying their patterns. Increase the quantity of rare basic materials dropped from encrypted vault threefold. So this is a separate update. Again, increase the quantity of rare basic matri uh, materials dropped from encrypted vaults threefold. The elite vulgus that appeared in field missions and filtration operations will now drop them as well. Director's comment notes, the most efficient way to farm rare basic materials is through encrypted vaults, but for those who prefer hunting monsters, we have updated field missions and infiltration operations to drop these materials as well. The dev team will closely monitor the overall farming status and do our best to create a joyful environment for all of our descendants. Huge update there. Reduce the time from 290 second to 260 second occupations for the Kingston Vulgus data transmitter hacking mission. Improve the battle pass battle supply shop buttons visibility by reading designing in the button format of the bonus shop banner. You can get season limited skins for free from the battle supply shop complete preseason challenges to uh, claim your special uh, skin. I think a lot of people did miss out on uh, realizing that so there you go with that. Update the library window from closing when the map is open and close through the acquisition information pop up. Improve the duration of party invitation messages to make them easier to confirm and accept. Improve the uh, duration of the descendants instructors line. Many descendants have commented that the Descendants Instructor's dialogue contains many useful game tips. Currently, it's not possible to revisit the previous dialogues, but we're planning a fix on this. We will continue to make improvements so the Descendants can easily access the information they require. Move the guide NPC you meet after first arriving in Albion closer. That's actually a nice fix. Uh, I, I actually do quite like that. That's very, very small, and I don't know how they came to the conclusion of doing that, but that's actually a pretty uh, good fix, uh, or an update, rather, for those that are just jumping into the game. Optimization improvements. Okay, so as far as performance goes, they have changed a lot, at least improved a lot. Improve the stability of the shader pre uh, preparation process by reducing the CPU load during shader generation. Currently, we are actively monitoring the issue, and if you encounter issues with a 13th or 14th gen Intel, CPU, please refer to Intel's official guide. Lower GPU memory usage when set at high or higher quality. It seems like high is where most people with a decent PC is presetting to. Fixed an issue where character skins were displayed abnormally in low graphic settings intermittently during extended play. Fixed a bug that allowed frame limits to be set when using NVIDIA and AMD's frame generation. Those are all PC fixes. Then common fixes. Fixed an issue where shadows were intermittently displayed abnormally depending on the view made various other fixes for optimization purposes and we will continuously monitor them as well. Bug fixes, UI and UX fixes, fixed an issue displaying unused items in the library, fixed an issue where descendants could not get out of DBNO when their HP was below 100% for module settings, fixed an issue where Kyle would occasionally go up in the air when using superconductivity thrusters during repulsion dash, fixed an issue where they could not get back up using arch explosion after being inflicted with knockback modules, fixed an issue where the increase in firearm attack per stack in the sharp precision shot module was summed 
instead of multiplied. Equipment fixed an issue where a weapon's attribute damage did not apply damage over 100,000. Fixed an issue where higher values were displayed as ultimate gold option despite the reactor skill cooldown and skill cost stats being preferable with lower values. Fixed an issue where lower values were displayed as the ultimate option uh, despite the weapon change speed stat being preferable with higher values. Field changes. Fixed an issue where amorphous material pattern 118 and shape stabilizer form 8 were not dropped at Frozen Valley Vulgus strategic outpost in Fortress and Hard. Fixed an issue where elite Vulgus in the White Knight Gulch upper hierarchy battlefield missions did not drop rewards. Fixed an issue where monster spawning was interrupted at some Vulgus strategic outpost. Then we have instant dungeons updates and fixes. Fix an issue where Vesper's resource box materials were dropped from Echo Swamp, Agna Desert, White Knight Gulch, uh, High Ghost, and Fortress Infiltration Operation resource boxes. Research. Fix an issue where the core materials of Ultimate Descendants were incorrectly displayed as rare instead of Ultimate tier, and then some miscellaneous fixes as well. Fix an issue where the Go title screen menu was displayed with the same phrase as Exit Game. Fix an issue in the story where Ultimate Chimera was used for Dreadful Abomination. Added missing words in the probability display for executioner tier uh, three set four directors did drop a comment uh, those are all of the updates and now this is an update from the director after all of the patch notes it has come to our attention that the community is worried about possible nerfs to tamer and glaze infinite magazine builds this meta is very strong but since it is within the scope of what the dev team has planned there are no immediate plans to do so in addition some weapons are more powerful when tamer and there are a variety of character builds that rival glaze infinite magazine so please enjoy them fully we've been looking forward to seeing descendants use a creative builds to take down powerful Colossi swiftly, so we're quite delighted to see this in action now. We are well aware that as many descendants begin farming in earnest, various discussions are taking place regarding drop rates. There is no variable drop rate system in the first descendant. We are using the fixed rates displayed in-game, which there has been a point of contention, and I think a little bit of uncertainty if that was actually the case. The dev team has reviewed the acquisition rates across all servers and confirmed that they are dropping according to the rates displayed. We are currently working on various measures to ensure the community can trust the dev team such as disclosing item drop amounts for each content and also prepare ways to improve the farming experience the first descendant will continue to communicate transparently and honestly if people are actually having issues as far as drop rates and if it's not just in their head, they should implement something uh, like an unlucky timer or something like that, where after a certain while, you're just guaranteed to get something. I get it that percentages aren't always going to be uh, ideal, but uh, they should implement something like that to make sure people are rewarded in a at least somewhat suitable manner so the farming doesn't get too too crazy and i certainly have seen people complaining about that again that can be something that's just in your head uh but again with as many people that are pushing back on the drop rates uh something to consider there but that is the hotfix that has just dropped obviously they're continuing to work on a lot more stuff so we'll see how all of the updates roll out but that is going to do it for me first descended is at this point something that i think a lot of people are finishing up with the main story i know there's been a little bit of discussion as far as the end game content but bear in mind and i feel like this gets lost a lot we are still in preseason. season one is kicking off in september and then season two in december and there's going to be more content updates so um you know I see a lot of people playing this game, especially on PlayStation, just as a free-to-play title. They've maybe spent $10 on the Battle Pass, and they're enjoying the game for what it is, and I really think that's the best way to enjoy the first Descendant. If you go super in the weeds and then assess the microtransaction elements, you're just gonna tie yourself into a knot, and, uh, you know, it's Nexon being Nexon as far as that's concerned. So if you want to enjoy the game, like how I'm playing the game of just focusing on myself and enjoying it with the MTX aspect not being at the forefront of my mind. I think that's the best way to enjoy the game right now, but that's my two cents. Sound off with all of your thoughts in the comment section down below. Thank you for watching and goodbye. Hey guys, we hope you enjoyed the video, and if you did, make sure to hit the subscribe button, and if you're already subscribed, do us a favor and hit the bell icon. This way you'll be notified whenever we post a new video. That's the best way to keep up with all of our uploads, and we usually try to upload two videos a day. And with the bell icon hit, you'll be notified whenever we do upload a video. As always, thanks for watching.